So as you may recall, the last video I made was in response to a YouTube video uh, that somebody made um, that was supposed to be, or they claimed to be critiquing my paper, The Medium for the Propagation of Light. But in reality, all they did was they cherry picked a few words um, and then decided to insult my intelligence. And so, you know, I'm still a little bit bothered about that. Um, but basically, I just want to use this as an excuse to clarify my position and to clarify my terms. And I think it's really important because the biggest problem I think we're facing right now is the problem of language. Okay, it's, it's very easy to misunderstand someone if you don't look up your words. Okay, it's really important to, to look these words up in the dictionary. And if you're going to trash someone, I think you should, at the very least, open up a dictionary, search the word on YouTube, look up the word and see if, if what you're claiming to be true is true. And in this case, it, it wasn't true. And so, so the term that um, they were trying to call me on was actually not even in my paper, but it was in the informal abstract on my page on ResearchGate. I do use the term vacuum of space. And so this is the term I want to talk about and clarify today. Uh, I, I do not use this term in my paper. As you can see, here's the abstract, the informal abstract. I use the term vacuum of space. But in my actual paper, in my actual abstract, I do not use the term vacuum of space. But I don't have a problem with it. Okay? So, um, you know, if I were a god, I would be a vengeful god. I don't know if you know what a vengeful vengeful god is, but in uh, Buddhism and Hinduism, they have these things called vengeful gods. And um, basically, the purpose of these wrathful gods or vengeful gods is not to harm the other person, but to enlighten them. And so if, if in my last video or if in this video, if I sound like I am, um, you know, I am wrathful or angry, hopefully I won't. But, uh, you know, it, it's not to harm the other person, but really to try and wake them up, to try and enlighten them, to try to make them a better person, because uh, I think everyone has potential to be good. Okay, I don't wish any harm on any sentient beings. Okay, but when I see bad behavior, I'm compelled to call it out. And, you know, so that's all I'm doing. So let's talk about the vacuum of space. So in uh, this video in question, the video I'm talking about, um, this person claimed that the word vacuum and space were synonyms. He was basically mocking me for using this term vacuum of space and claiming that the words vacuum and the words space are, um, are synonyms. Okay, so let, let's see if this makes sense. Okay, so let's look up the term vacuum. Okay, a vacuum, the very first definition that I found when I looked up vacuum is a space entirely devoid of matter. Now, if the words vacuum and the word space were synonyms, then basically a vacuum is a vacuum entirely devoid of matter. And that doesn't make any sense. Or alternatively, we could say space is a space entirely devoid of matter. So, you know, either way, it doesn't make sense. The, the, the word vacuum and the word space are not synonyms. They're closely related, or they can be closely related. But you can't just say vacuum because the vacuum of what? So let's do another example. Let's imagine that someone accuses me of not being smart enough for something. Okay, so what, what are they really saying? What they're really saying, so now we're going to define vacuum in terms of intelligence. Okay, so a vacuum could be a brain entirely devoid of intelligence. Okay, so the word vacuum could be used 
um, to describe a person or a brain that is entirely devoid of intelligence. And so it's not enough just to say vacuum and it's not enough just to say space, okay? I need to say vacuum of space because I need to clarify what the vacuum is. So what is missing? Something is missing. So vacuum implies that something is missing. And in, in this case, in the case of space, the vacuum is a space entirely devoid of matter. And a dumb person is a brain entirely devoid of intelligence. And so, you know, hopefully you didn't, don't think that my brain is entirely devoid of intelligence, but, you know, some people have accused me of such things. And uh, so, you know, I thought it would, this would be a good example to show why I need to say the vacuum of space and not just vacuum and not just space. Vacuum and space are not synonyms. So now I'm going to define space in terms of what I'm trying to say in my paper. Okay, space, I define space as a medium that consists of vortex-anti-vortex -vortex pairs. Uh, it doesn't really matter that they're vortex-anti-vortex -vortex pairs. What really matters here is I'm saying that space is a medium. It's a medium that is consists of something. It is not nothing. It is not empty um, in of itself. Okay. A vacuum is space that is devoid of matter, but space itself can still be a medium. Okay. Space itself can still be a medium. Okay. So now I can define vacuum in terms of this uh, new definition of space. Okay. So space is a medium that can, I believe consists of vortex and vortex pairs. And so now a vacuum, I define a vacuum as in vacuum of space as a vortex pair medium entirely devoid of matter. So now we're getting some clarity because now I am defining what space is, and then I'm defining what a vacuum is in terms of space as a medium. Okay, a good example um, would be, let's uh, define space as an ocean, or the medium as an ocean. And we could say a vacuum is an ocean that's devoid of fish. So long story short, Space and vacuum are not syn synonyms, as I stated. Space is the medium, and vacuum is the emptiness of said medium. So space and vacuum do not have the same meaning, and I am arguing here that I need both words um, so that I'm not ambiguous, so that what I'm saying is not ambiguous. If I just say space, there's no implication that it's empty space. And if I just say vacuum, you don't know what medium I'm talking about. So the vacuum of space, the, a medium that is empty of something, a medium of space that's empty of matter. Okay, so the other criticism I think I got from that video had to do with the vortex-anti-vortex -vortex pairs themselves. Okay, if vacuum is defined as space devoid of matter... Are not vortex pairs also consider matter? And uh, to that I say, no, they are not. And I will explain why. So in the ether model that I'm proposing, matter consists of unpaired vortices. This is the difference between matter and vortex pairs. Okay, so what about electron-positron annihilation? Are not electrons and positrons considered as matter? Yes, they are, but only when they are unpaired. When unpaired electrons, matter, and unpaired positrons, matter, come together, they are said to annihilate with the release of a pair of gamma rays. 
So here's what I think is going on. When electrons and positrons come together, they pair up into vortex pairs. Okay, they pair up into vortex pairs and fall back into the sea. Okay, they fall back into the sea of vortex pairs. Now in this image here, uh, it shows the effect of vortices, unpaired vortices. So this picture here, this image here is one unpaired vortex. And the picture on the right is a vortex anti-vortex pair. And so what this um, figure shows, and this is from a paper I read, that the unpaired vortices um, create a disturbance that um, is not local. That is, it creates a global disturbance in, in the BEC, in the background. And when you put a bunch of unpaired vortices together, you get, um, you know, you get, uh, de you get a decoherent, a non-coherent um, pattern. But on the right here, you've got a vortex-anti-vortex -vortex pair. And what this diagram is showing is that the vortex-anti-vortex -vortex pair, the disturbance that it creates in the background, is very localized. And that is the difference between vortex-anti-vortex -vortex pairs, electron-positron pairs, if you want to call it that, and unpaired vortices. And this is why, you know, and so when matter appeared in the universe, they were unpaired. They're unpaired charges. You can call them unpaired charges, but they're really unpaired vortices. So this puts the term charge and, and the term vortex in, un, in the same footing, in, in the same um, category, I guess you could say. So here's another image of a Bose-Einstein condensate or BEC um, experiment showing a whole bunch of vortex-anti-vortex -vortex pairs in a background of a Bose-Einstein condensate. And you can see how they self-organize the, into a pattern. Um, they Obviously, they're trying to be as far away from each other as possible, and so they self-organize into this kind of hexagonal pattern, and um, they do it quite naturally. So um, this is why I say you know, the vacuum of space, if it's vortex-anti-vortex -vortex pairs, it's going to be homogeneous and isotropic um, on its own. So this would be space in the absence of matter. So this, by definition, is a vacuum. It is a vacuum of a BEC that uh, is completely devoid of matter, but it does have vortex anti-vortex pairs and so here this is another example of a, you know what I would consider a, uh, a good analogy let's say for the vacuum of space so now I can define the vacuum define a vacuum a little more accurately um, so I can say space, I can define space as a medium that consists of vortex, anti-vortex pairs, like that. And now I can say a vacuum is a vortex pair medium entirely devoid of unpaired vortices. Okay, unpaired vortices are matter. So matter um, is unpaired vortices. They're not paired with their anti-vortex or anti-particle, if, if, you, if you may. Now, if a proton and an antiproton came together and annihilated, they too would fall back into the vortex C. They would fall back into the uh, vortex anti-vortex C um, because they are now vortex, anti-vortex, um, vortices, sorry, vortex, anti-particle, anti-particle vortices. And uh, that is what happens when particles and antiparticles annihilate. They don't completely annihilate. They fall back into the sea of vortex pairs, at least in 
the proposal that I'm making for my ether model. I'm not saying I know anything. I'm not saying that this is true. I'm saying that this is the model that I am proposing. So like I said in my last video, I choose my words very carefully. I chose those words vacuum of space, even though I didn't use them in the actual paper. I do say vacuum of space quite often and I have a very specific meaning when I say those words. Okay, so one of my viewers asked me, what would you change in your paper based on, you know, whose comments about me? And uh, basically, you know, I say, unless someone finds a mistake in my paper, I have to say that I wouldn't change a thing. I wrote this paper very carefully and, um, you know, you know who did not do a proper critique of that paper. You know who cherry picked a couple of words he didn't like, like vacuum of space, and then proceeded to, you know, insult me personally. So, you know, um, I don't appreciate that. I don't, I don't think it's necessary for people to behave that way, but, um, Anyways, apparently he put out another video and it had something to do with language. I'm not going to watch it because I don't, I can't take the chance that he's going to do that again to me. So uh, if anyone else wants to watch it and if he says anything good, then you can let me know otherwise. Um, or if he says anything, you know, about me, maybe I should know. But other than that, I won't be watching his videos anymore. And, uh, but I will, you know, continue to, um, torture him with my clarity and, uh, you know, define my terms and hopefully this will be helpful. I hope this is helpful to you guys. I hope, um, this is making sense. And if it, you know, if it doesn't, then I guess I have to make more videos. Um, thank you very much. Have a good night.